Excellent. Um, and would you like to just start off by introducing yourself? Yeah, my name is Lana Wild. I, I'm a singer songwriter. Right, I'll try that again. My name is Lana this Wild. Is, this is, there's no cuts in this. That's so okay. whenever you mess up, that's staying in. Oh, great. Yeah. Perfect. Not to add any pressure, but it's there. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. My name is Lana Wilds. I'm a singer songwriter from Edinburgh, and I also happen to be transgender. Awesome. Um, do you want to start off by just like plugging off all your like everything you want to plug? Because sure. sometimes like there's a drop off. Like there's like ten percent actually stay to the very end. Or not ten percent. Ten percent drop off. So like ninety percent listen to the end. But that ten percent uh-huh. could be like your biggest fan. So you never sure. know. Well, I've got a record out just now called Bear. Um, it's an acoustic EP. You can get it on Spotify and Bandcamp and Deezer and all that good stuff perfect yep and then I've got a single out in the summer um, and that's going to be with the band and we're doing a video as well and I'm doing a UK tour just shortly after that so yeah lots of fun stuff to look forward to awesome so check that out ASAP and get a lesson um, so first of all thank you so much for coming on and talking with me um, thanks for having me I'm kind of weirdly excited actually to yeah. talk to you and because I feel like I've never I don't think I've ever spoken to someone who's trans so I don't know anything about what it's really like I only know sort of like the perception that's given through like social media and stuff exactly. like that which is probably a bit fogged um, so could you kind of just start off by like maybe I don't know where, where's the best point to start right at the beginning yeah I mean you can you can start anywhere you like so ask me anything you what was growing up like for you? Growing up was kind of difficult. Um, I, you know, I come from a family that's that's great, but kind of my parents weren't like stuck in their ways. But a but bit like, more conservative, maybe. Yeah, I guess so. Like I'd never even really heard the term like gay, for example, until I was like ten or eleven. Right. Um, and I was like really like sheltered from all that stuff mm. and I didn't really know what any of it meant and you know I'd, I'd never to my knowledge met someone who was like LGBTQ of like right. of any kind but I always like you know it's like really cliche for a trans person to say this but like I always knew growing up and like especially like into my teens as well that there was something going on mm. I knew something wasn't right because like I couldn't really relate that well with like other boys for example like that was a big thing like I was never into yeah that's what I'm going to ask were you like stereotypically like boyish no no not at all not at all I was um I was the gawky kid with big hair that Mm. liked records and and indie films you know and like I don't know like I was always like really into like you know like my cuddly toys and stuff Growing up, still am now. To be fair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just need to take one look at my bedroom and see that. <laughs> um, but yeah, and like most of my friends, I mean, even now as well, but most of my best friends were like always girls as well. And I just right. related better okay. with girls and related better with women. Um, and it was just a case of like, I knew that something inside of me wasn't, wasn't right. Right. And then as soon as I heard the term, the term transgender, I was like, shit, that's me. Right. Like, like, like that makes perfect sense. The cog started working, you're like, yeah, oh, I realised. Like, so cog started working, but then I tried to like, bury it for really, years yeah. and years and years. Yeah, because I was like, you know, like, that makes sense. But you know, like, that's, you know, that's ridiculous. Like, that's not, that's not oh. something that I could ever do. Because I, I, I've never met another another trans person so it's not like there was someone you could kind of like look up to in life and think oh well they did it so if they can do it I can do it exactly like I didn't know any other trans people right for is there any sort of like trans people in the media and stuff like that that you could look up to or anything that or nothing you could connect to not really at the time Um, there was nothing that I could really connect to and then every time you would see like a trans person in like a film or whatever and they would either be getting like ridiculed or like hypersexualized Mm. right you know, like right. any of the above, and it was just never shown as like a genuine yeah, human. Yeah, it was never shown as like a genuine human or somebody that you should look up to or something you should like aspire to be or something you could connect with. It'd be like, oh, here's this, you know, like ridiculous thing yeah. that we're gonna continually take the piss out of. Or you would get like newspaper articles where it'd be like, oh, like 
soldier becomes beautiful woman overnight and mm, stuff right. like that. It just had to be like the most dramatic version of yeah, it. Yeah, it had to be like so like dramatised. There was nothing or nobody that I could really look up to. So I spent like... It, it was never just like, guy yeah. becomes girl and lives a happier life. Exactly. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. It had to be like something really dramatic. Yeah, Catch both like, eyes. The exactly. quick baby title kind of thing. Yeah. I'm just going to segue into another point and then we'll come yeah, back yeah. to the main point. Absolutely. Like, there's this whole like almost like misconception that to be trans you have to struggle mm. and like you have to go through this whole big like turmoil and struggle and like while that's true for me personally like that is my journey but like that's not the same of every trans person right like some people are just like oh I'm trans and then they transition and that's it right you know it's, yeah like yeah. so there's this whole big whole big thing um I suppose it's never focused on like if it's easy then people don't really care like there's no story yeah, there in a sense exactly so yeah there, there's nothing that like on a sort of negative yeah, attitude towards it that's exactly it there's it's nothing like the outside world can like grasp onto yeah and be like oh I'm gonna stick my nose into this kind of mm. thing so yeah like I, I spent like a really long time um in my teens and in my early 20s being really really depressed mm. um just like couldn't couldn't yeah. find yourself in a sense just couldn't know. figure myself out couldn't find yeah. myself couldn't relate myself to anybody and then Lord Jane Grace from Against Me came out as trans in 2012 right and I was like hmm it's possible <laughs> hmm. right that's interesting so you yeah. could like finally connect with something yeah because I was like holy shit like here's someone who fronts a punk band mm-hmm. that I love and they've just come out as trans so was like, that a male female transition yeah right yeah um all right that's interesting yeah and it just like it blew my mind and for the first time it was like a light went on and it was like holy shit like this is possible this right. is something that i can do so i started like so what age were you about that time so what are we on 2020 yeah so i would have been i would have been 20 or 21 right and then so would you consider that sort of like the the first steps of your like you going into like major transitioning no not no? even um it was definitely when the light went on for the first time right um but like i kept trying to bury it because i was like you know like this is possible but it's so it's so overwhelming right. and like gender dysphoria which is usually the thing that pushes a person to realize that they're trans is a really like difficult thing to to live with right it's it's immensely difficult and even after you start transitioning it's still immensely difficult it's something that never really goes away and like for me personally it's like it's okay some days but some days i really like can't deal with it um so, so like excuse my naivety no ask away. um so do you just sort of like cognitively perceive yourself as a female yeah and and you just always sort of done that, and you've yeah. sort of suppressed it until a certain point where yeah. it's like, no, 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 this is this is who I am. Yeah, it was right. like my own brain was suppressing it because right. I, I didn't know why I felt the way that I felt. But like, there's so many pinpoints through growing up and through my teens that I can lock on to and be like, oh, that's why, that's why that happened. Yeah. that's why I did that. Yeah. So like in retrospect, you're like actually yeah. <laughs> that all makes sense yeah exactly <laughs> i was just sort of oblivious at the moment but yeah. now looking back and it all makes yeah yeah it's like the like the, the signs were all there yeah and you know for some people when it came out mm. it was a surprise and for a lot of people it wasn't mm, at right all. okay um which i found really interesting mm. um but yeah is there like, like sort of like can you correlate the people that had a surprise with the people that didn't have a surprise like the people that were surprised are they sort of like not in denial but were they like also trying to like not look at the signs but the people yeah. that sort of knew it was coming they were always like we're self-aware we yeah. know what's going on here like yeah, yeah. exactly like there, there's one of my best friends who has since admitted like we've been best friends since we were 13 right well, since i was 13 he was 15 but he's since admitted in the last year that he kind of saw signs right along the way but didn't want to didn't want to think about it right um but now it's like didn't like, want to push you into anything or no it, it? it wasn't that he didn't want to push me into anything it's just like he didn't want to sort of like accept that 
something was like something like that was happening because like you know back then it was still something that was very much like mm. looked down on right and that you know that was like ridiculed and all that we've come a long yeah, way that's... in even like the last 10 years in terms of like trans rights and issues and how people like me are viewed and how we're spoken about and all of that when you look at it in a positive sense but yeah i spent so long trying to suppress everything um and having like real problems with like alcohol and drugs and and stuff like that um and you know being like massively like massively depressed and being suicidal and and then there was there was one there was one incident a couple summers ago which was really what pushed me to realize that I had to transition um where I blacked out on my on my mum's kitchen floor after being brought home by the police because they'd, they'd found me in the street outside of a bar um, and they hadn't so much arrested me they just like found me and mm-hmm. taken me home just saw that you were sort of vulnerable and were like we need to yeah we need to get you somewhere yeah somewhere it, safe. Kind of, it kind of scared the hell out of everybody like me most of all and that's when I realised right okay I've got down. to yeah. I've got to change something here and it was about two or three weeks after that that I came out to one of my best friends right eventually so that you so, that would probably be more of the, like the the start yeah of the transition that was definitely that was. definitely the start so we did the whole thing where you know we, <laughs> we like played around with like makeup and like girls clothes mm. and like stuff like that and it was like super fun like I actually kind of like almost like it's that Mm. <laughs> I hate to sort or of like, like do, do this like I feel like this is what the media always do but it almost does kind of sound like a movie plot like yeah. and it just yeah. sounds so wholesome and nice yeah. and uh, um, so how like what was sort of like the steps you took so you started like like diving into like makeup and stuff like that yeah and, so and then, so I came, I came out to my friend and and we you know like we we had lunch and we sat down on our couch and we were trying to sort of like figure out what was going on with me because I initially thought like in my head I was going oh like I'm I'm gender fluid I, I can't be trans right like, that's that's crazy when of course like I knew I was trans right I was like Just oh like, like I, I think I'm like gender fluid you're the first person I've told um, and she totally knew that, that I was trans as soon as I said it she was like <laughs> she's like bitch come on like, <laughs> yeah okay yeah what were you so we so we had like three or four nights at hers where you know she like put makeup on me and we just like put me in like different clothes and stuff and like this is so wholesome yeah and she was just sort of like waiting for me to say it and I like came out with it by accident one day and she was like do you know what you just said and I was like well can't go back now. <laughs> is it warm in here? His parachute is a knapsack. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, <laughs> it's like yeah. exactly it. And uh, yeah, uh, then just kind of started it. And you know, there, there's no, there's no easy way around with these things. Like it's mm. been very much like big ups, big downs. Yeah. There's no linear path. Yeah. As Everyone well. will have a different experience, of course. And, yeah. And even for yourself, it's it's not like it's yeah. It just yeah. goes quite simply. It will, like, yeah. Um. So yeah. So for you going into this, like um, I I I, I don't know. I feel like it, it's so hard for me to sort of understand what it's sort of like mentally, like what it's physically like, yeah. or, I, or, or emotionally. Like I just, I I just you know yeah like. It's it's crazy. Yeah. It's probably the best way to put it. Like, um, yeah. I mean, like when when I was like first coming out, I was like scared to death all the time. Just all so sort time. of like how people would yeah. perceive you. Yeah. I suppose the sort sort of a like social influence on it that yeah. will be the most that's terrifying. The, that's the biggest aspect. thing. Yeah. But that being said, I mean, I, I feel like I got lucky. Like I grew up in like the DIY punk scene. Mm. which is like notoriously like very nurturing towards like lgbtq people yeah. of, of any kind so I, I feel like i got lucky that way so like my coming out wasn't it wasn't super difficult it was kind of difficult with my family um how did they handle like it? my mum really didn't take it well no at all majority of my family were, were okay um but how yeah. are they with it now um yeah my mum's like a lot better with it now 
um, and then the rest of my family were just like cool yeah mm. no bother that's fine is that the best way for people to handle it it's just like alright cool yeah. no bother or do you like when people like sort of question you about it and like get to know about it kind of a bit of both like it's good when people want to ask questions in like a respectful way because then mm. you've got a platform to educate people right so I'm breaking a sweat right now you're like I hate when people ask me questions about this and I'm like oh uh, this is awkward no no not at all <laughs> like like I I actively try and put myself out there as much as possible mm-hmm. and be like do ask me questions do come to shows do look at what I'm doing because mm-hmm. it's important that you know about this stuff yeah you know, like, I'm very purposefully, very, very visible yeah. as a trans person. Like, I'm also really aware that in terms of, like, being a musician, like, I'm a trans person with a platform, which actually is still pretty rare. Mm. Um, it's a lot rarer than, like, say, like, trans, like, YouTubers or actors or, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I'm, I'm very aware of my platform and, in a sense, I guess, my privilege mm. in that way. Right. So, I'm trying to use it to, like, the best of my ability so that people can ask questions and people can see me and be like, oh, okay, this is normal. And also, I suppose, so people can connect to it for people exactly. that were going through what you were going through. Exactly. Um, that's that's yeah. the name of the game, man. Like... I, I want people to see me and realise that they don't have to be afraid. Yeah. And yeah. that, you know, Which it is, is possible. Which is awesome that you're doing that. Like, Thank that's you. incredible. Appreciate um, it. You're very welcome. Big shout out to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Uh, like, I actually had a conversation just the other day with someone and they were like, they don't, they didn't understand why people put like, uh, like trans in their bio. Yeah. Or, or, or like or their like, pronouns. Yeah. Or, yeah. And I was like, of of course, like you don't understand, and like yeah. it makes sense for me not to understand. Yeah. Because we're white cis like like males that like, we don't yeah. need to worry about anything. We don't need someone to look up to. Do you mm. know what I mean? We're fine. We are yeah. the majority of people. Exactly. It's for the minority of people that yeah. need someone to look to and think, oh, they can do it, and yeah, they're exactly. doing this, or or they're succeeding, sort of like in music or in art or yeah. in whatever, and they're trans. Yeah. That's some th- something that like would be immense to con- connect to and like yeah. maybe even like contacting sure. and like understand what they're going through you know what else like it's great for us like trans and non-binary folks as well when cis people put their pronouns in their mm. bios it <laughs> normalizes it for us oh yeah okay fair enough yeah. yeah so it's like a really nice thing when you come across a cis person i never and they, thought and of they that have their pronouns yeah. in their bios that's it's interesting like, it's yeah. A cool thing. yeah yeah mm. kind of like warms your heart a little bit yeah yeah. I'm tempted now. <laughs> you should. You should yeah. go for it, man. Um, um, I feel like I'd get heavily slated from no, from people like, why are you doing this? You don't need to do this. But then you can just be like, well, this is why. Fuck you. And, you I, and I just send them this podcast and be like, yeah. watch this, and then you'll get it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But that yeah, also like, works as free publicity as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's brilliant. I love it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's a whole, like, there's so much stuff that that goes into it I mean there's so much stuff that goes into just like everyday life as a trans person yeah and it's it's just sort of like flipped upside down like yeah. everything changes yeah like my whole life changed drastically from like the second that I came out yeah and I know that sounds really dramatic no I believe it I really really believe cause that because it is yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. true um everything changed drastically like Things change, like, even just the way that, like, like people perceive you on a day-to-day basis. Like, people, like, literally stare at me in the street. Mm. Like, or, you know, like, I get, like, weird guys hitting on me in bars now, which is still kind of weird for me. Right. And, like, That's but it's, like, the, the majority of the time they're, they're hitting on me because I'm trans. Well, I'm, I'm confused <laughs> what yeah. do you mean so it's you there's like a group of guys that you get that are called chasers and they <laughs> fetishize trans women what yeah it's a, it's a whole thing like for <laughs> example transgender porn was the most watched category of porn in 2019 what in the world what <gasps> what yep this is um, this is crazy just for example this is exactly why I have this podcast that's the reason here because 
like there's this culture that exists mm-hmm. and as soon as you dive into it there's a million different subcultures yeah. and that's the bit that like yeah. that gets my heart going because I'm like what I, I, yeah. I wasn't ready to learn these fans Whoa. <laughs> so they're called chasers yeah so and what's like guys that fetishize like, trans women are, are nicknames chasers and like I know that you can't really add like a explanation for why someone has like a fetish yeah. but like what is the reason behind it is it sort of like I guess it's because like they, they feel like they're getting away with something or or whatever I I honestly don't really know so interesting yeah it's like you know it's pretty wild I mean like you know you know big up the guys that are into trans women just because they view us as just being regular women mm. you know big yeah. up but like chasers that you get on like social media platforms and stuff like that like that's that's some creepy shit man <laughs> it, it seems strange but then yeah. it is strange yeah. because it is something that's just not the norm yeah. and I suppose like exactly. just like being trans is, is strange because it's not the norm yeah. but that doesn't mean exactly. it's like wrong unacceptable it's, it's yeah. just it's just a bit different exactly. which is okay I guess um, yeah. I'd love to speak to someone that's like that has a, a uh, what are they called again? Chaser. Chaser. I'd yeah. love to talk to them and be like what's going on there? See like not, none of these guys will ever be like oh I'm a chaser yeah, like their their names chasers by the trans community. Yeah, yeah, it's like a derogatory <laughs> is, is that, term. That, yeah, yeah, it's almost like a derogatory term. Yeah, you know, which I feel a little bit bad saying, but also it's. Does the same thing exist for like, uh, like, uh, women who have transitioned to men? Do they have like, women chasers? Well, like, the, the, this is the thing. No, hmm. like very very often, like trans men are left out of the conversation completely. Which why is that? Because they're not fetishized in the same way um, as trans women are. Trans women are continually like vilified by the media because we're seen as like you know villainous men in dresses. Uh, it's like oh, uh, cast your mind back to the the drag queen visit in the primary school, right? And there's oh, a yeah. whole hoo ha about it. Yeah. Now you might be asking yourself. Why was there a whole hoo ha about it? The reason there was a whole hoo ha about it, I'm going to stop saying hoo ha now. <laughs> <laughs> Just realised how many times I said that. <laughs> Doy. Um, <laughs> um, was because, like, drag queens are often lumped into the same category as trans women hmm. by the media and by people who hate trans women because they're seen as being villainous men in dresses that are perverts hmm. and a risk to women. And all of that, of course, none of which is true. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of stuff happens all the time, but the same is not said of of trans men, because trans men are viewed by these same people as still being women, so they're like, oh, it doesn't matter. Even though they're that's, not women, they're That's men. also, like, in both situations, it's, like, insanely, uh, like, disrespectful. Because yeah. on one side, it's like... It is, yeah. I know this this man is a man and always will be a man yeah. and they're a terrible person and then on the other side it's like oh no they're just a woman we don't even need to think about them they're just a woman yeah. they're, they're, they're just confused yeah. and that's like <laughs> it's such an antiquated thought to yeah. have um, one of the things that happens a lot with trans <laughs> men is they're like they're hated on a lot by like kind of like older like butch lesbians a lot of the time like in, in gay bars and stuff because they like they see it as being like erasure and all that I mean that's like a, that's a whole other mm. subject but like yeah it's <laughs> being trans of any kind is really difficult yeah it's really difficult I mean I maintain that it's the best thing I've ever done for myself and for the people around me but fuck is it difficult yeah, yeah <laughs> like <laughs> um, well talking about difficulties do you want to jump into trans exclusionary radical feminists yeah, yeah. they are the, so that's, that's where it's at <laughs> they are the worst kind of people they yeah. exist online they exist in real life yeah. they exist within the I government. mean there's quite vocal ones like yeah so, when uh, I, I had no I'd never heard of this until yeah. I messaged you and yeah. you sort of told me about it yeah and then I did some research and there's like openly public people of like high positions yeah. like politicians in America <coughs> the SNP um, and <laughs> and uh, people who are journalists and stuff like that. Yeah, there is. I'm just openly sort of like proud to say that because that's yeah. not. And in a sense, like I guess that is the right of freedom of speech. But yeah, but it's when, also fascism. Yeah, when it involves like, it's like in my in my opinion, 
it's okay to have those thoughts. It's when those thoughts are stopping people like you from being included in things, yeah. or or sort of like uh, this is this. These are like the, the stems of like why hate crimes happen yeah. because of people that are in high yeah. positions vocal about it. Exactly. There's this whole, like I said, there's this whole trans panic in the media, and it is perpetuated by people who have a lot of reach, like yeah. Graham Linehan, like Sharon Davies, mm-hmm. like Joanna Cherry. Who's that? Uh, Joanna Cherry is a MSP in the SNP. Right, okay. Um, and also Joan McAlpine, who's also an MSP right. in the SNP. Um, Joanna Cherry and Joan McAlpine are both very vocal and are both people that I and my peers have previously had run-ins with like right. on social media and in real life and do they express why they hold these opinions yeah because they they think that they think that trans women aren't women but where they're does like, that come from like what they're like, like no penises in female spaces and all that bullshit and like Joan McAlpine for example sorry Joan but not sorry if you're watching this um, actually like describes herself as being gender critical um, which is what you'll find a lot of people who are TERFs call So it's gender critical? Gender critical is just being a trans exclusionary radical feminist. Right. So it's a term that they that they coined because they now think that TERF is a slur. It's not It's not a slur. Mm. It's a descriptive term. Yeah. And you got people like LGB Alliance, who you may remember from that viral video of a girl being chucked out of Polo Lounge in Glasgow for wearing oh. an LGB Alliance t-shirt. What was the story there again? So she got chucked out of Polo Lounge in Glasgow yeah. for wearing and promoting LGB Alliance, who are a known hate group. Right. Um, and then she tried to turn it on its head and be like, oh, this is crazy. Like, this is erasure, yada, yada, yada. Hmm. And everybody was just like, shut up. Like, you're part of a hate group. Hmm. And that's why you got chucked out. And it was the whole thing. So there's this constant, like, fight where these people are trying to project their views as being like protecting women and girls which of course is leaving trans women and trans kids like out of the conversation completely mm. and automatically vilifying us which just isn't yeah like sort of seeing them as like an outsider yeah right? like it like what these people are doing is fascism mm. it is it's it's fascism and um, some people are probably going to get on to me for saying that but it is it is fascism and that's that's the issue at least in this country like we aren't shot and killed for being trans <laughs> the murder yeah. rate for trans people in the US right now especially trans people of colour is sky high in Chechnya LGBTQ people of any kind are literally like rounded up tortured and killed and the government's fine with it in Poland they have LGBT free zones really? yeah that's just become become a thing, oh. and like there's like <laughs> as a trans person, as an Poland, openly trans person, there's like sixty countries that I can't go to. What? This is, oh, man. I was I wasn't ready for this information. Yeah. <laughs> Not ready for this. Yeah. So you see the extent of the, of the issue, and this is perpetuated by, by the right wing media. <laughs> I'm I'm honestly a bit lost for words right now. Um. Me too, most of the time. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a crazy, 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 like, situation. Like, 2020 is a scary time to be to be trans. This is, like, a sort of tangent I'm about to go on, but, like, I, I suppose at one point, it was, like, man and woman. It was man who had to, yeah. like, do man stuff and, yeah. I don't know, like, Go and all hunt. these stereotypes and then like women had to stay and birth children and all mm. that but we have sort of like evolved outrageous amount yeah, till now evolved tenfold like at this point what does it matter exactly you know we can just live in harmony yeah and do whatever you want like, well th- this is the thing like um, you know I've, I've had this same conversation quite a lot and like my response to it is like the basis of it is that people are scared of what they don't understand and that's been the same throughout history yeah like trans and yeah. non-binary people have existed all You're throughout history absolutely right since the dawn of fucking time I mean look at the Egyptians 
yeah. crying out loud. Yeah. All your gods wear dresses and makeup. Mm-hmm. You're no, you're absolutely right. Do you know what I mean? You're absolutely right. Yeah. But like classically, all throughout history, people are scared of what they don't know. It's like they're trans, mm. throw rocks at it. Yeah. They're gay, <laughs> throw rocks at it. Yeah. They're black, throw rocks at it. Mm. Like the list goes on and on and on. And that's you know, that's why still in twenty twenty we're still in this mess and still have these ridiculous stereotypes and only half the world seems to be coming around to yeah. you know how things actually are it's hard to fathom that that in Britain so much of this sort of hate still exists yeah and this might be sort of the most progressed country out of them all so this is a weird peak yeah. to be at when this bar's quite low for yeah. how we should treat people in a sense yeah exactly how do we sort of how do we fix this? So, and, by being by being visible. Mm, yeah, yeah. Like, I guess yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, people are scared of what they don't know. So yeah. the more you talk about it, the more that people like come out and are open yeah. about it and express their thoughts. Yeah, we fix it through visibility and education. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's the way we fix it. Do you think, uh, like, when you say education, do you think it should be sort of integrated into schools? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. How would like, you go about that? I honestly think that. At the moment, there is nothing like enough representation for LGBTQ kids in mm. schools. Um, like, sex education is mm. a perfect example of that. Like, it's a shambles in the UK, it's a shambles in the US. Like, you're just not taught about, yeah. about the stuff that you need to know. Like, see if, like, during school, like, I was taught about, like, gender identity and that you could be queer my life would have been wildly different and that would be the case for so many people that I know as well and it'd be the case for so many people even now that are you know that are trans kids Mm. or that are just queer kids you know of any kind like we need more education we need more representation it's it should be it should be mandatory but my fear is that that won't change for quite some time yet because people yeah. are still so That's what I was still so saying. scared do you think that is something that is expected in the next few years or do you think it's still I would like to think so but I don't know how realistic mm. that hope is yeah I suppose like the the saying is like oh just wait till the, the generation die that believes in this yeah but then for some reason that generation still that doesn't really help like exactly there needs to be a sort of like ground level yeah. education and work your way out exactly I mean like for me on a personal level like now what I'm doing is trying to be the person that I needed growing up right does that make sense yeah yeah that's incredible but thank you but I just like I guess what I mean by that is like I didn't have anyone around me growing up that was queer really that I knew about um or that I was knowingly exposed to Mm. I think even, you know, like, back in high school, I think I knew of, like, two, maybe three gay kids, mm. for example. Yeah. And there was nobody trans that I knew of. I mean, there was, like, 2,000 people in my school, so chances are there's probably at least one other one. Mm. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, I just didn't have any of that. And I know for a fact that there's so many people in my position and there will continue generation after generation to be people in my position and I want to get to a point where people aren't scared to come out in any way it'd be amazing if we didn't even have to use the term coming out like somebody could just be like oh I'm gay or I'm trans or I'm bi or I'm non-binary and that's it yeah and people are like alright cool that's the ideal but yeah we just education and representation and visibility Um, that's the way we fix things I I read an article the other day um, I was probably like I was going down that rabbit hole after talking to you sure and uh, we love to see it (laughs) (laughs) it was uh, uh, this woman who was who was writing about how basically long story short it was all about how the the woman believed that (laughs) the only reason a man would transition to a woman 
it was so they could like get into women's bathrooms and see women in vulnerable states right and, and like instantly after reading that I was like okay like regardless if there's even a percent of like accuracy there if someone is willing to do that they're willing to do it regardless of transitioning or not Thank they're you. they're just sinister people they're clearly just malicious people they're exactly. going to do malicious acts nothing like that doesn't mean that there's like yeah i, I like I, I, that doesn't make any sense like articles like that are so problematic for the reasons that you've just said hmm. and like that stuff is one of the things that these like turfs and gender critical yeah. idiots like pedal on a daily basis but how like sort of low does your intelligence need to be to be susceptible to an article like that Exactly. And I'm not saying that like I'm sort of like high, yeah, no, high and mighty. You're right, though. but it's just you're general right. like kindness. Like, yeah. kindness is the most powerful, powerful thing, and mm. that doesn't mean we should be, be naive to crime. It's just that we shouldn't excuse crime by yeah. saying, "Oh no, it's because of trans people." No, yeah. it's, and that's not how that works. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's just, that's almost like banning water because someone drowned one time. Like that's that's the most like irrational way of coping with yeah. anything ever. So here's the thing, right? Like, you've kind of already said it already, but like, if a predatory man wanted to go into a women's bathroom to be predatory, he's going to do it anyway. Yeah. It's not like he needs some, he like, woman to, key or like. Yeah, he doesn't need to dress up as yeah, a woman yeah. as tarps, like, like to do Like, his woman that. passport and the woman passport yeah. slip. Like, he can just push that door and that's it. Also, the percentage of cis people trying to fuck with trans people in bathrooms is way higher mm. than vice versa yeah it's way higher i can imagine yeah i mean there's been countless viral videos viral articles <clears throat> of trans people being in bathrooms it's ridiculous. The, one What's of the ones that stuck on? out to me the most um was a trans girl in her high school and the principal literally came into the bathroom with another teacher and was like opening the door and like telling her to get out and stuff and she's literally sat there filming like I'm peeing like what the fuck are you doing and it went viral as it should have yeah and it's like hello like it there, makes me so uh, mad uh, yeah it's, it's like completely like unfathomable that this is the, the point in which people are at like yeah I don't know it's hard to understand like it's strange because someone being trans is odd because it's not like the norm. Yeah, exactly. And it's sort of like, it's hard to understand, but it's not that hard to understand. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's just a bit different. It's you know? like if you educate yourself for two minutes, yeah. you're like, all right, like, okay, now I get it. And also, that doesn't affect me at all. Like, yeah. you, you, like, transitioning had no effect on my life. Yeah. There wasn't some sort of like exactly. cosmic pull that ruined my day that day. No. Nothing. Exactly. Right, but what does ruin people's day is seeing things where people are like inciting hate, like that video yeah. where that guy's like breaking into the toilets. Yeah, you know, like yeah. what? Like that? How does he not think? Oh wait, I'm I'm being like the bad guy in this situation. I'm the problem here, not exactly. not them. Like what am I doing? I'm literally like exactly. being the sleaziest person alive. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense no, it's so irrational no it doesn't make any sense and it is completely irrational and this is the whole thing yeah like day in day out trans people are portrayed in the media as being predatory and ridiculous and irrational mm. yeah and it's just not true like for example the Guardian just published an article the other day by a known gender critical mm. professor um, and in response to it, 388 Guardian employees from around the world penned a letter to the editor of the UK Guardian to be like, this is completely wrong. You've now cemented our reputation as being a transphobic newspaper. Whoa. Then there Whoa. was another letter okay. signed by the public, which 2,500 people signed. And it was all because over that article, another trans employee quit from the Guardian. Whoa. Right, yeah. You know, like, that's the most recent example yeah. of uprising and how biased newspapers are mm -hmm. against LGBTQ people, period. Yeah. Trans people are at the front of that right now, but it's LGBTQ people 
period yeah it's just you know antiquated thoughts that's what I, was. I was about to say something really ironic there and I was I was going to say <laughs> people should just mind their own business they should but they I'm should the complete opposite of that because I'm, li- I'm literally in your house right now talking that's to you okay, with though. microphones like. yeah that's cool though <laughs> but as a whole unless you want to like educate yourself just mind your business that's a exactly idea. yeah I feel like that's a, that's a really good way to put it like mm. either educate yourself or shop yeah. basically I guess it's kind of like that same old like if you've got nothing nice to say just yeah. don't say anything exactly you know? if you've got nothing to learn <laughs> shut up my granny loves that saying she well, used to nothing, say that all the time nothing nice to kids. say yeah if you've got nothing nice to say yeah. don't say anything it's a good one yeah I stand by it yeah me too um, this is sort of like on topic but slightly off a little bit sure go ahead what are your opinions on uh, trans people and sports because I know that's kind of like a yeah, very that's like, kind of a hot topic yeah, right now yeah um, honestly so, for for context for people that don't understand it's sort of like the the debate is uh should uh male to female transitioning people be allowed to like uh play in like female leagues or should they be like restricted in men's leagues or how does it work right. um yeah and that's about the general gist of it uh, right and yeah. the sort of controversy exists because I guess if someone's born a man, mm-hmm. they have sort of like the biological structure of a man. Yeah, that is, that is part of the debate, and that is true to an extent. However, um, being on hormone replacement therapy and like mm. testosterone blockers yeah. and stuff like that, of which I am and can attest to, um, rapidly decreases your strength. It decreases really? your muscle mass. It decreases your stamina. It decreases your libido. Because this is all stuff that requires testosterone right, to work right. properly. And yeah, that, that is something that's is never brought into the debate. What about ever. on the other side of the spectrum where it's a woman uh, transitioning to be a man? Do they would need to take testosterone. Yeah. Which, so, would so that be an advantage, tra- in a sense? <sighs> yes and no. Is that not seen yes as sort of no. like doping and like... Yeah, it could be, but then if that person is openly trans, like, you know, if they're openly trans, then they should be allowed to compete in men's mm. sports, and there would be no real advantage. If, if you know, if anything, they'd probably be at, at a disadvantage, disadvantage still. Yeah. yeah. You know, depending on, you know, what point they were at, or anything like that. And then to flip it on its head again, so going back to, like, people who are male to female, and mm-hmm. um, you've got Fallon Fox, um, who does, like, MMA, uh, and is doing you know stupendously well yeah. and she's a transgender woman yeah. you know but there's constant debate around whether she has advantage over other women in the sport and she just doesn't like yeah. the only advantage is the same advantages of anybody in different like weight classes for mm. example would be you know it's just like it's such a stupid archaic debate no in like, my opinion sports sucks anyway and it's yeah. all a nonsense and Me it's too. all just for like advertisement money anyway yeah so it if it's put on a show what does it really matter yeah. who cares who wins it is a load of nonsense but the debate with it is a load of nonsense yeah and it, it really is just another platform <laughs> for people to get angry mm. yeah. that is basically it yeah it sounds about right actually you just like anywhere where people can be angry they will yeah, be angry people want something to shit on mm. and right now it's the trans community that's being shot on yeah in 10 years it'll be something else yeah oh I wonder what's next <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah I wonder what is I'm next I'm excited to see what's next yeah, yeah. god I bet yeah, it's going to be lifted off your shoulders when someone else gets picked on <laughs> it's, yeah, like, bloody like, hope so. it's their turn <laughs> <laughs> it's like I did my time <laughs> but no like that that's basically my view on it I don't really have much to say on it and I don't have much to say on it because there isn't that much to say mm, on it. Yeah. It's quite straightforward, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. That, that is it. I like that. In, in my eyes, that is it. Concise. Yeah. Um, is there anything you kind of want to bring up? Is there anything you want to talk about? Um, I don't know. I mean, like, I guess, like, there's, I didn't come into this with anything, like, specific in mind. I like, don't either. I'm kind of, I'm kind of like you. I just like to, I like to talk, talk. to people who, it's just a conversation. who want to know about stuff. Yeah. You know, like... Would you encourage people to come up and talk to you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, always. Like, always. I always want to talk to people. That's awesome. You know, like, I I try to be as 
open and as welcoming as possible. I mean, and generally speaking, people don't push their luck with that, which is good. What do you mean by push their luck with that? So it's like it's possible to get in situations where people like ask you too many questions or are too invasive mm. or anything like that. Like this is different because that's kind of the point of what we're doing. Yeah. But I just mean in like kind of like everyday conversations or when it's somebody that you've never met before yeah. for example like say somebody like that's still me <laughs> yeah but, but like but like, do you, like do you know what I mean though like so, I, I thought, uh, yeah. yeah so say someone like some came degree. up to me at a show and we got talking about like my being trans and mm. I'm an artist and stuff and yeah. then they started getting like asking stuff that was too invasive I'd be like okay like yeah, it's almost like I mean correct me if I'm wrong here it's almost like they're they only care about you to speak to you because you're trans, but not as a person. Right. It's just like, oh, you're trans, 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 yeah. trans, 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 and it's not like, oh, but what do you think of other things outside that spectrum? Yeah. Like, what do you think of this and that and whatever? So and like, it's just a conversation. Yeah. Right? So, you're right. And like, while I want people to speak to me because I'm trans and they yeah. want to be educated and and that's great. Yeah. Like, five ten years from now, I don't want to be known as that that transgender right. artist. I just right. want to be known as an artist Lana Wilde yeah. she's a singer songwriter yeah. that's the way it is yeah. oh she just happens to be trans yeah. my being trans is not the most interesting thing about me Yeah. do you know what I mean yeah abs- 100% like, yeah, I totally get that it is, it is me it is who I am it's part of me but it's not the most interesting thing about me there are mm. many more interesting things about me and I have opinions and all that on many many more things yes I want to educate people yeah. yes I want to be visible yes I want to help people and I encourage anybody who wants to talk to me but you don't want to be put back in that box me. where you're just you're only seen as one thing again yeah like. but I never ever want to be in a box like you say where I'm just seen as oh that trans artist yeah. that's all she's able to talk about that's mm. all she knows about I never want to be that yeah and I never want to be that because it's not fair and it's exhausting yeah and it's not okay to put people in boxes. Yeah. Ever. There's Just like not. there's n- not one person that can only talk about one theme for a long. Yeah. It's, yeah. Exactly. But like, I do want to educate and be open and be accommodating. Like, like I said at the start, like that is why I'm so visible. Yeah. That's the whole reason. You know, like, any trans or non-binary folks who are watching this, please come and talk to me. Please hit me up on socials. I want to talk to you. Let's help each other out. What about people that aren't like a minority like that? Do you still encourage them to? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Just to just hear you out and like. Yeah. Well, that's the most important thing, isn't it? Like, the people who are the majority that don't really know yeah. about this stuff and like, and how it works. Like, yeah. in a way, like, those are the people that I want to talk to the most. Mm hmm. Mm, yeah. You know? I get that, yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, like, you know, I want, you know, baby trans to like, to see me and be like, oh, I can, I can come out. Um, my friend Stacy in the in the states refers to people who are just starting their journey as translings. Oh, that's that's my favorite. <laughs> you, you, should, you should check them out. Actually, they're yeah. uh, they're a YouTuber. They're called Stacy Fatemi. Shout out. Yeah, I'll so link in the description out. and stuff. Um, they were actually out. instrumental in my coming out, um, and then we became friends, which is that's cool. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome that that sort of like community exists. Yeah. Like and again, like the internet would do, as like kind of like the only thing that helps keep yeah. these things connected. For sure. I mean, like I'm not like a. This is kind of a tangent, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. So like a lot of time. I love tangents. Like, <laughs> trans people, especially trans women, are like hypersexualized, and the world is like, oh, like if they're, you know, if they're not hyper feminine, then we don't give a shit. But the reality mm. is, like, so many trans people aren't hyper feminine. Like, take me for example. I'm not hyper feminine, and I'm okay with that. I'm actually okay with being, you know, like to an extent, like a little bit bitch. Like, that's you're fine. just doing your thing. Yeah, I I like that about me. Like, I mean, everybody likes getting dressed up. You know, I love putting on a face. Love looking cute. Mm. But like, the reality is, you know so many of us aren't this hyper feminine version that the world thinks that trans women are so discovering Stacy was really cool for me mm. because Stacy was just this like cool fucking skater kids 
who was a bass player and had this mm, like just doing their thing sick taste in music and I discovered oh, them and went oh my god that's me that's the first time I've seen me right you know this is a trans person that I can relate to yeah yeah like oh my god I don't have to be hyper feminine I don't have to hyper sexualize myself yeah. and all that and I was just like holy shit so is it sort of like when when people like transition they feel like they have to like turn it up to like 11 kind of thing yeah. they have to be the the most of that thing but <coughs> yeah. then it's like mm, that might not be the case you can kind of yeah. just just exactly. live your life you can just do what you want be this exactly. and do that wear this wear yeah. that Doesn't exactly really there's a whole culture where trans women are expected to pass as mm. being like as being like cis women right and like like an invisible bar that you need to sort of like cross to exactly to exist in that and that I don't state. give a shit about that yeah like it's so strange I don't so strange look cis constructs exist I'm never gonna look cis I have no desire to look cis yeah I just you know I just am me mm-hmm. and that's why people like Stacey are so important because mm-hmm. they're like that as well that's amazing so that was like a really big yeah. thing I wanted to get across today because like a lot of people only see the the hyper sexualized yeah. and hyper feminine trans folks because they they think that we all look like the trans women in like porn for example mm, right you know and like while like I take my hat off to all the trans women in porn yeah like fucking A um, that's something that I could never do um, we're not all like that yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah like that's there's, what it is there's everyone everywhere in yeah. all different places yeah yeah all walks of life yeah any category of person that you get you're getting that category of people in all walks of life I just had a, a thought there I just like it popped into my head I sure. was thinking when you if you get in a relationship I don't know if you're in a relationship right now I'm not I'm not just now if you get I'm in a relationship <laughs> <laughs> if you get in a relationship do you feel obligated to tell the other person that you're trans yeah I mean like with me they're gonna know I'm trans anyway so like I I right. look trans like <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's just a thing but yeah I would never I personally would never get into something without telling someone that I was trans what does look trans like what does that mean I just mean like like I still have like a lot of like stereotypically male like characteristics right you know like I've got like big shoulders I've got like a super visible Adam's apple right like, you know it's like pretty obvious to people probably like looking at me that like I was born a boy I went I went through male puberty right you know okay. and like sometimes that plays on me like dysphoria wise sometimes it doesn't sometimes I embrace it um but yeah, like, with me, like, in a way, I feel like I'm lucky because I'm not into dudes. So that, like, removes a whole danger there. Because a lot of time, like, a lot of time, like, cis men are, like, scared to be with trans women or be seen with trans women for fear of looking, like, gay or hurting their masculinity or whatever. I know. Uh. I know. <laughs> but me, on the other hand, I'm a massive lesbian. Mm. And mm. generally speaking girls are much more like accepting accepting and nurturing and it's just it's not really been an issue for me yet like on like dating apps and stuff for example I'm like openly a trans person right I'm like hello I am a trans woman my pronouns are she her has that ever been like problematic no not yet not yet that's good that that really shows the world does go in the right direction yeah something that does happen a lot um is that I get asked for like threesomes by couples a lot. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't laugh. That's I know. like so I, outrageous. I, like. I laugh every time because it is outrageous. Um you'll like match with some girl on Tinder and be like, oh she's cute and then you'll get a message like, oh do you wanna do you want a threesome with me and my BF? And you're like, no. No, that's not why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you though, but no. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. Uh, um So yeah. That's really the answer to your question. I also just had another thought, right? And it's like, I, like see, um, I don't know if other things exist like this, um, but I was just kind of thinking in the back of my head, but sure. you have like male and female bathrooms. Mm-hmm. And I guess you have like male and female like changing rooms and stuff yeah. like that. Like yeah. when you go to the gym or, sure. or like uh, a shop and there's like, sure. and it's like clearly divided. Yeah. Do you think there's like 
a better alternative to that? Would it be like just unisex, like anyone's accepted, or do you think that the the standard male female is probably better? Uh, there, so there's kind of two sides to that. So like, there's a huge non-binary community, and I don't think it's fair that non-binary people should have to use a gendered bathroom or a gendered changing room or anything like that I just I don't I don't think it's okay yeah that they should have to put themselves in a box to do yeah. a basic thing the so, most basic thing the most yeah. basic thing I just don't think it's fair um <sighs> yeah like I, a, I think like one. It's I a think weird one. Generally speaking, like gender neutral bathrooms are the way forward. Yeah. Some people would argue that that cre- increases danger from like predatory men. Example. Again, example. if those men are going to do it, yeah, they're, they're, gonna they're do it malicious anyway. men that are going to do it anyway. Well, yeah. this is what I mean. So I do think that the way forward is like gender neutral bathrooms and gender neutral like changing rooms and all that stuff. Um, but I don't think that society is in a place yet to completely rule mm, that out right. so yeah I think that that's the answer but do I think it's completely realistic right now no yeah. it will be soon what's kind of strange but is right that right now it's, it's not every time uh, that I've used like a just like a a bathroom there's no no label yeah. like people get excited they're yeah. like oh this is this is exciting we all just use the same bathroom you know yeah. like there's almost like it's weird that there's a sense of excitement to that because yeah. it's the most normal thing mm-hmm. but as soon as it's tweaked just a little bit as yeah. soon as it's changed a little bit people almost like lose their mind they're yeah. not ready like what? they're like oh my everyone, god everyone in the same bathroom <laughs> like how will we cope like yeah. it's just anarchy like, whoa. like some people are like freaking out some people are like this is so exciting we need to take photos like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it's it's, it's crazy wild. yeah and the many times like yeah. you'll, you'll go to like a bathroom and the sign will be like like uh, I'll have like a quirky like phrase to like express that it's all inclusive everyone's yeah. welcome yeah. and everyone's taking photos like everyone yeah. takes photos and they're like this is like incredible like this is peak humanity you know I actually spotted someone doing that last night yeah I, uh, <laughs> it's funny I was playing uh, I played a show at the Banshee Labyrinth last night and they have gender neutral bathrooms there you go and I <laughs> it's <was, laughs> so funny I was going into the bathroom and uh, this Spanish couple rocked up and the guy was like, you know, like, eh, hey, do I go in here? Do, do I not? Uh, like, total, like, humming and hawing. And this, this missus just points at the sign. She's like, you know, clearly going, it's gender neutral, mm. you idiot. <laughs> and, like, he clearly just blew his mind and he was like... He just wasn't and, like, ready. He was out his phone and he's like... <laughs> 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 I was just like watching this all unfold while I was washing my what hands. Was I was just like, like, oh my God, that's so funny. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, that's I, like, I've never encountered something like that before until last night and I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> well, if that's not a good note to end on, I don't know what it is. Cool. Um, is there anything you want to like quickly plug again before we get out of this? Um, I've plugged everything already I just want to say thanks so much for having me thanks so much for listening thanks so much for watching thank you so much for talking to me this was great anytime I feel like I have uh, used my energies wisely today I've learned a lot today so thank you very much I'm so glad and I hope other people will learn from you speaking I hope so too thank you you're so welcome thank you